Hey everyone, are you excited about the incredible potential of AI image generation, especially with the new state-of-the-art flux models like Schnell and Dev? Have you been wanting to create custom styles and characters, but found training Loris daunting or expensive? Well, get ready to be blown away because in this video, I'm going to show you how to easily train your own custom Loris on the powerful flux models using my brand new flux gym run pod template. I created the template based off the original Cocktail Peanut Flux Gym repo to help streamline the process of custom Laura training. It leverages the power of the RunPod Cloud platform and simplifies the user interface for training with Flux models. You'll be able to train your own specialized Loris on these models in a fraction of the time and for a surprisingly low cost. We're talking about potentially less than 50 cents for a complete training run, depending on the GPU you choose in RunPod. RunPod is a robust cloud computing platform specifically tailored for AI and machine learning applications. It's built for managing complex workloads and lets you utilize either powerful GPUs or CPUs for your tasks. Now, thanks to FluxGym, you can access this power with an easy-to-use interface designed for training Flux Loris. In this video, we'll walk through the entire process of using the FluxGym template in RunPod to train Alora for the impressive Flux dev model. This model and the Schnell model represent a significant leap forward in image generation. They're known for the quality of the images they can produce, and now, you'll have the ability to tailor their output to your own specific needs. I'll demonstrate the GPU options and settings to ensure efficient and cost-effective training, helping you get your Loris up and running without breaking the bank. As a tip, you'll need a Hugging Face account to save your train Loris. Downloading files directly from RunPod can be a bit tricky at times, so pushing your LoRa to a Hugging Face repository makes sharing and accessing it much simpler. If you haven't already, smash that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out on more awesome AI content. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, consider subbing to my Patreon. There you'll find exclusive custom workflows, easy-to-use comfy UI one-click installers, and most notably, access to my newly created custom Flux Loris Discord bot. Simply provide your prompt, select the Loris you want to apply, use an enhanced prompt from our LLM prompt enhancer, and let it generate. We'll be adding more bots and Loris in the near future, so stay tuned. You can also join my YouTube members community to enjoy the same benefits. All right, let's jump right into setting up our Flux Gym environment on RunPod. First things first, head down to the description and click on the link to my RunPod template. This will take you directly to the Deploy GPU Pod page on RunPod. If you don't have a RunPod account, you'll need to create one. It's quick and easy. On the Deploy GPU Pod page, you'll be presented with a range of GPU options, everything from the latest H100s and RTX 4090s to powerful A100s and more. Each option has an associated hourly cost. To keep our training budget friendly, we'll be using the RTX A4500 for this demonstration. At the time of this recording, it offers a great balance of performance and price, costing between 26 cents and 35 cents per hour. You get 20 gigabytes of VRAM and 31 gigabytes of RAM, which is more than enough for our LoRa training. Plus, the A4500 usually has good availability. Go ahead and select the A4500 option. Double check to make sure you're deploying the correct template. It should say, Local Lab Flux Gym LoRa Training with Kohaya SS. If you'd like to make any adjustments to the template, for example, if you need more storage space, you can click the Edit Template button at the bottom left. This lets you modify the container disk and volume disk storage sizes. Important note about storage. Container storage is temporary. You'll lose any data stored there when your pod terminates. Volume storage, on the other hand, is persistent and remains even after your pod is shut down. I recommend using volume storage for important data that you want to keep. However, be aware that both container and volume storage have hourly fees associated with them. I suggest keeping the container storage size at least 70 gigabytes to ensure you have enough space for the models, datasets, and your train loris. Once you've made any desired changes, click the Set Overrides button to save them. You can choose how many GPUs you want to use for training. For this demo, we'll stick with one. 
Scroll down to the Instance Pricing section. Here you can select how long you want to rent your pod for and the type of pod. I'll be using the most affordable, interruptible option, which brings the hourly cost down to 18 cents. Be aware that interruptible pods can be terminated by RunPod if GPU availability gets low. The total cost estimate for your chosen configuration will be shown at the bottom of the page. Once you're happy with your settings, click the Deploy button. RunPod will start building your pod and automatically execute the scripts to install all the necessary dependencies and download the required models. This process can take about 10 to 15 minutes due to the size of the models. You can monitor the progress in the Logs tab. You might need to hit the Refresh button a few times to get the logs to appear. When you see the final script executed with the local URL displayed in the terminal, that means it's almost ready. In my default template, you'll usually know it's finished when the storage capacity reaches around 63%. Once the installation is complete, click the Connect button. Now, don't click Start Web Terminal, that will just open a command line terminal within your pod. Instead, click the HTTP Service 7860 button to launch the latest version of the FluxGym Web UI directly in your web browser, even if it says it's not ready. Great job! You've successfully launched your FluxGym environment on RunPod. Now it's time to start training. Alright, we've successfully launched the FluxGym Web UI. Now it's time to configure our LoRa training settings. First, give your LoRa a name and enter it in the name of your LoRa field. Next, type in the trigger word or sentence that you'll use to activate your LoRa when generating images. This is how the model will learn to associate your training images with a specific style or concept. For VRAM, we can select the 20 gigabytes option since our A4500 pod has plenty available. This will give us the maximum compute power for faster training. Now let's talk about a few other key training settings. For this demo, I'll stick with the default values. However, you might need to experiment with these settings depending on the specific LoRa you're training and the results you want to achieve. Repeat trains per image. This determines how many times each image in your dataset will be used during training. Max train epochs. This indicates the maximum number of complete passes through your entire training dataset. A common value is 16 epochs, which usually provides enough learning opportunities for the model. Expected training steps. You can often leave this set to zero, and the system will automatically calculate the optimal number of training steps based on your dataset size and other parameters. Sample image prompts. You can include sample image prompts to help guide the model during training. Separate each prompt with a new line. Sample image every in steps. This setting controls how often the model generates sample images during training. It's a good way to monitor the training progress and see how the LoRa is developing. If you click on the Advanced Settings tab, you'll find even more parameters you can adjust. Flux models, unlike some previous stable diffusion models, offer a wide range of customization options. Feel free to explore and tweak these settings to fine-tune your LoRa training. Now it's time to add your training images. Simply drag and drop them into the dataset section. While there's no magic number for the ideal dataset size, I recommend using around 15 to 20 high-quality images for optimal results. Next, you'll need to caption your images. FluxGym makes this easy with the built-in auto-captioning feature powered by the surprisingly capable Microsoft Florence 2 model. It will automatically download Florence 2 and generate captions for each of your training images. Once the captioning is complete, click the Start Training button to begin the training process. You can monitor the progress and view the training logs in the Train Logs section at the bottom of the page. Training times can vary depending on your chosen settings, the size of your dataset, and the amount of VRAM you're using. Expect a bit of a wait, but it's generally much faster than training on platforms like Google Collab. In my demo run, the training took a little over an hour. Different GPU options might further reduce the training time. Be aware that sometimes the FluxGym UI can get stuck where nothing happens in the terminal. If it happens, check your pod and see if the GPU utilization is still in use. If it is, it means your LoRa is still training and you should wait for the training process to be complete. You'll know it's complete once the GPU is no longer in use.
My Flux Gym UI got stuck during the demo causing me to refresh the page, but I was still able to complete the Laura training. If this happens to you, don't worry. The Loras you trained are most likely still stored in the pod container storage. Now that your Laura is done training, it's time to download it to your device. The easiest way to download your Laura is to first push it to your Hugging Face account. Navigate to the Publish tab. To push the Laura, you'll need to log in to your Hugging Face account, create a model page for your Laura, and obtain an access token. Head over to Hugging Face and either log in or create an account. Click on your profile picture in the top right and select New Model. Give your model a name and click Create Model. Next, click on your profile picture again and go to Settings. Click on Access Tokens in the left menu and create a new token. Make sure to give this token right access as this is required for pushing your LoRa model. Copy the access token, go back to the Flux Gym web UI, paste it into the Hugging Face token field and click Login. Now, in the Train LoRa section, select the LoRa you just trained from the drop-down menu. Type the name of the Hugging Face repository you created into the repository name field and click Upload to Hugging Face. The upload process might take a minute or two. Once it's finished, your LoRa should be available on your Hugging Face model card. To download the LoRa, go to your model card on Hugging Face, navigate to Files and Versions, and click the little download arrow next to your LoRa file. Now you can put your LoRa to use. Place the downloaded LoRa file into your LoRa folder in your preferred image generation program. I'll be using ComfyUI, so I'll put mine in the ComfyUI slash models slash LoRa's folder. If you need a refresher on the ComfyUI setup, check out my previous Flux Gunf tutorial, or consider subscribing to my Patreon for a convenient Windows one-click installer for Flux Gunf and Flux NF4 workflows. This installer automatically sets up ComfyUI, installs dependencies, and downloads the necessary models for you. To test your new LoRa and Comfy UI, load a Flux workflow with a LoRa node. I'll provide a link in the description. Select your LoRa in the LoRa node and start generating images. Feel free to experiment with different training settings and datasets to refine your LoRa's. Don't hesitate to share your experiences and results in the comments below or join my Discord server. I got the link in the description. Thank you for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more AI art and machine learning content. Until next time, happy creating!